Okay, this is your in-class assignment number 16. It's going to be a Galton's board. And the Galton's board is what you see in front of you right now. It's this series of pegs that a ball pops through, drops down, and, you know, randomly enters one of these bins. You may have seen it physically before with a board with nails and BBs, just thousands of BBs running through and um, entering into the different bins. You end up with a nice Gaussian looking curve, a nice bell curve of BBs in these different bins. It's very interesting and I think you'll like what you do here. It's going to be very interesting for you. Um, when you come into class, you're not going to see this. This isn't what you're going to get. I'm going to give you this which is an empty board. Now, you, you have no pins. You're going to have to make your own pins, but you have a falling ball, and you have these bins that can count up however many times the ball enters the bins. So all you're going to focus on here are getting these pins going, all right? Um, let's see, what would the first thing be? Well, the first thing would be is just to make a single pin, right? So if you make a single pin, uh, now you're going to have to go through and do all of the physics that's associated with that pin. And you see with that single pin, um, what you have is you have to detect that there's been a collision and then you have to decide which way the ball bounces, all right? There's also, if you notice, there's also some um, damping. There's a coefficient of restitution that's built into this collision. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So this is going to be your first step. After you get this, there's no more physics left. Everything that's going to be left in this simulation after you get to this point is going to be using for loops to create lists, to use lists, and so forth and so on. Um, so when you're using the lists, you're just going to have to use that for loop and go through the entire list. But you're also going to have to do a nested for loop to create this um, triangle pattern, right? So that means that you're going to use this list, you're going to use this for loop to go through and do the same thing several times, only modifying it slightly because you're going to be doing it in this next iteration. So the first time you go through the for loop and you're making this, you should make this first single pin. But then for the next iteration, you should make two pins slightly lower, right? You, you see what's going on here. Now, if you do the third iteration, it'll make this um, these three pins slightly lower than the two pins, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. And you'll have to do that, I think, um, six or seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven times. So that's going to be what you'll have to make in your um, program. It's, it's a very useful technique. Um, it's not really that difficult. In fact, in Python, it's incredibly intuitive as far as I'm concerned compared to, you know, what I learned when I was learning basic, right? So I think you're going to have a fun time doing this. You're going to have something you can show your friends and family, and it's, you know, a really cool thing just in general. So I will see you in class.